Well, hello, good people. In today's video, we're going to build a control net workflow. Now the workflow we're gonna build today is a basic control net workflow, and we'll be able to use it for both SDXL and Flux. Later on in the video, I'm gonna explain what control net is, but generally, it's a way of conditioning your images based on sort of like a blueprint. For example, you can take a control net like Open Pose and condition it so that you can base your image off a particular pose. Another popular one is called depth, where it creates a depth map from foreground to background and uses that depth map to create an image. As always, everything you need will be linked in the description below. The first control net model that we need is called control net union. And this is the one for SDXL. Once you click on the link, you'll be brought to this page under files. And what I typically like to do is copy it from here. And the one you want is the Pro Max version. So once we click on download, under your main comfy UI folder, under models, you'll see a folder for control net. You want to save it in this folder. And for the file name, you want to just paste that file name, but remove the beginning part and just save control net union SDXL 1.0. We'll do the same thing for the flux dev control net union. Click copy on the icon, click on download. You'll notice it's quite a big file, 6.6 .6 gigabytes. Paste the file name once again, remove the beginning part and save it in the same folder. Now within Comfy UI, you want to go into your manager, click on custom nodes manager, and we're going to install some custom nodes. Technically, we only need to install one because the other one you should have already. The first one is Comfy UI's control net auxiliary preprocessors. That's a mouthful. <laughs> go ahead and just click the install button here. Mine's already installed, obviously. Again, you should already have the RG3's Comfy UI nodes. If you don't, go ahead and install that. And I know I sound like a broken record in all these videos, but make sure you're on the latest version of Comfy UI, click on update all, click on restart, and let's get started. Now, if this happens to be your first time watching one of my videos, this is a series of videos. So make sure you watch the previous videos. Otherwise, none of this is going to make sense. With that being said, we're going to start with our basic image to image workflow. So if you've been following along, we have our basic image to image workflow here for SDXL or Flux. It doesn't matter really. And generally we have our typical nodes, load checkpoint. We have a LoRa loader, clip text and code for positive, negative, Flux guidance, case sampler, VAE decode, and our save image node. Now, because this is an image to image workflow, we have VAE encode. We want to delete that, but we need the load image to use control net. And for now, I'm just going to delete the background here because we don't really need it at this time. And right off the bat, I will tell you that I'm using the all-in-one checkpoint loader just so we can flip between SDXL and Flux. But if you want to do a control net strictly just Flux and you want to use the unit or guff models, you can do that as well. First off, let's just scroll down to the bottom here where there's some space. The first node we need is to load the control net models that we just downloaded. So let's go right click, add node, loaders, load control net model, and just double check to make sure that you have those control net models in there. Next, we want to right click, add node. You should see control net preprocessors. This was the custom node that we just installed. Click on that and you'll see AIO for all in one aux preprocessor. Click on that. And the last one we need is for conditioning. So once again, right click, add node. Under conditioning, you'll see a section for control net. Click on that. And the one we want is apply control net. So while we're here, I'm just going to give them a box shape and we'll give it a color of purple so we can see which are the control net nodes. And let's bring the load control net model node right under our load checkpoint one. We'll bring our AIO preprocessor around here because we are going to connect these after. And then our apply control net. Again, if we look at this, the obvious clue is the conditioning nodes. So we need to put it in between the sampler. So let's bring it up here. We may need to make some space. So let's just select these three, bring them over, and we'll slide this guy in between. As always, we want to connect the dots. 
conditioning to positive, our negative conditioning to negative. We see a new input control net, and you guessed it, that comes from our control net loader right here. Let's go ahead and connect it. And it's up to you if you wanna do some housekeeping and reroute these nodes. Next, we wanna connect the VAE input. So we'll grab it from the load checkpoint node and housekeeping as well. Down here, we wanna connect the load image node to the preprocessor node. Next, we wanna take this image input and connect it to the apply control net. We'll go ahead and do that. And we also want to pull this out and create a preview image node so that we can see a preview of the control net. We'll head back to the apply control net node and then we're going to connect positive to positive to the K sampler, negative to negative. We don't have the empty latent image node. So we'll double click into our space here and type in empty latent size. I like to use this one because it has the pre-made resolutions. Give it a shape and color and we want to connect latent to latent. Just like that. Now while we're here, we might as well put a image compare node just like we've done in previous videos. So we'll double click. This comes from the RG3 node package and type in compare. You should see this node image compare RG3 and we're going to take this image node, connect it to A and we'll take the original image input here and connect it to B. Now for the sake of just showing you up close, I'm going to do this like that and bring it over. We're going to enable the tabs by going to properties, enable tabs, click on the checkbox. Once again, you should know how to do this already. If you've been following along, we're going to click on has second tab and optional. If you want to change the name, we're just going to click on second tab text and I'm just going to put compare and let's measure this up. Now for this one, I'm going to use the click option to do the comparison. So right click over the compare node properties, click on compare mode, and we're going to change this to click. We'll do some minor housekeeping once again. As always, you can arrange it any way you see fit. At this point, we want to do some tests. So I'm going to start with SDXL. We're going to select RealViz. You can use any SDXL model that you want. And we're going to load the SDXL Union Control Net. Now you'll notice both of these are called Control Net Union. And basically what that is, is that it's one model that can perform multiple control nets. There are dedicated models to specific control nets like depth, pose, scribble, whatever the case may be. And we'll get into that a bit later. So for now, just load the model that you want to use. They do work with LoRa's to some extent, but we're going to leave this off for now. Go ahead and enter a prompt that you want to use. And for flux guidance, we can bypass this or even just put it to zero. And before we get to this part, let's load an image and trigger the control net. I'm going to use this image of this pose and we're going to start with depth. And you can go ahead and just look for it or you can type it in. And the one we're going to use for this demo is called Depth Anything V2. And for both SDXL and Flux, we're going to use 1024 for the resolution since that's the native resolution of both models. In the Apply Control Net settings, you see that we have a strength setting. So this is how heavy we want the control net to have an effect. With a low number, it's only going to have a little bit of influence. So let's say I put in 0.3. It's going to influence the image only a little bit. And obviously, the higher it is, the more influence it'll have. I'm going to start with 0 0.7. 0 0.6, 0 0.7 is a good place to start. The start and end percentage has to do with generation. Typically, I'll leave this at zero and only worry about the end percentage. So again, we're going to go with something like 0 0.7. By ending at 0 0.7, the last 30% of the image will have creative freedom. And for the size, we're going to go 832 by 1152. Typically, you want to match the size of your reference image. We're going to switch this to random. Since it's SDXL, we'll just go 25 steps 
with a CFG of 6, and we'll just go with our usual Euler beta, and you want to keep denoising at 1, and let's go ahead and click on Q. You want to make sure you look for the green and that there's no errors. So what you're seeing here is a preview image of the depth map of this particular control net. If we look at this, the brighter white areas is going to be closest to the foreground. Anything in black is the background. Obviously, anything that's more gray is sort of that middle ground. And it's picking up everything between foreground and background. As we look at the sampler here, we see that it's using the depth map to create a new image. So if we look at the image here, we see this very psychedelic, hippie-like sort of image, right? If I click before and after, here's the reference photo. Here's the after. Let's zoom in a little bit. So ControlNet is very useful for, again, conditioning the image. Just like prompting is a way of conditioning, ControlNet is another way to dial in what it is that you want. So now we have this extra layer of control. Now I'm going to run another test using Flux, but what I'm going to do here is actually use the Flux Turbo Alpha LoRa so that I can decrease the generation time. You don't have to do this, but I find it works fairly well. So we're going to go ahead and just load the Flux FP8 checkpoint. And our control net model, we're going to change to the Instant X control net union. This one is for Flux. We're going to toggle on the power lower loader. And we're going to use Flux Turbo Alpha and put the strength to 1. If you missed the previous videos, basically this is a LoRa just like Flux Dev. But you can generate in only 8 steps. Conditioning, we'll just use the default 3.5. We'll leave the same control net settings. And in the sampler, we're going to enter 8 for steps. CFG of 1 because we are using flux. And by the way, when we enter 1 here, it negates the negative prompt and uses flux guidance. Other than that, I'm going to go ahead and run this. Now, just be aware when you use Flux Control Net, it is six gigabytes, so it's a lot more taxing on your system. Anyway, if we zoom into the image here, you're going to see, especially in the hand, how much more detailed it is with Flux. Now, SDXL is much more mature, and depending on your settings, you can get pretty much equal results. But with Flux, it's almost effortless. Different settings are going to affect the image, but even with just a depth map, it can pick up really fine details from the eyelashes to the teeth and the lips down to the veins and the wrinkles in the hands. Now I'm going to go back to SDXL and explain a couple more things. And this time we're going to use Canny. I'm going to go ahead and generate this and you'll see that in the preview image you're going to see a lot of outlines and edges. Basically that's what Canny does. It takes the outlines and the edges of the image and uses that as a guide to steer the generation. Unlike with depth, it looked at foreground and background. The problem with Canny though, especially if you're using high settings, the edges tend to be very abrupt and rough. So I left the strength at 0.7 and the end at 0.7. It should be okay. Yeah, let's zoom in here. So at this setting, you see especially the outlines of the image. It's not too harsh. If we were to use anything higher, it would almost look like a cutout image, right? So 0 0.7, 0 0.6 is a good place to start. You'll notice on the hand, it's not as detailed as Flux, but again, we can increase those settings. And then the other option is another one called Pyra Canny. So we're going to type in Pyra. You see it here. And we're going to process the same image. And I want you to see now the edges are different. It picks up a few more details. There's another node we can actually add to this where you can change the threshold of the edges. But I'm going to save that for another video. But I like using this version. It's more of an updated version of Canny. So if we look at the image here, it has just a bit more details with the same settings in the hands. So that's another option you can play around with. Now the next one we're going to take a look at is Pose. And I uploaded a different reference image with a better Pose. And the preprocessor you want is this one, DW Preprocessor. If we look at the preview, I'm going to open this up. 
You see that we have like a skeleton of the hands, the face. These points represent the eyes. The white dots are the outline. We have the nose here and the ears. All the various points are the joints of the image. So we have the wrist, the elbow, the shoulders, and the neck. Here's the other hand. And then we have the hips here and the thighs. And if we take a look at the generated image, it does a pretty decent job with the overall pose and even captures the hands in pretty decent detail. Now, the thing you have to be aware of, the way to get the best of this particular control net is for all the limbs to be visible. If we look at the reference image here, there isn't anything in the way in terms of the limbs, like you can see her thumb, her fingers, pretty clearly. So this one can work pretty well if you have a good reference image. Now, personally, I would suggest for you to start off with those three main control nets. Couple notes to keep in mind, for the SDXL control net union, you actually have 12 control nets plus five advanced editing. And if you go back to the Hugging Face page here, you're gonna see examples and descriptions of what each of these do. And for the Flux control net union variation, there's only seven control nets. So the SDXL control net is more mature, still very useful, but for the control net union for Flux, you are quite limited and know that it's still quite immature. That being said, I find depth works really well. Canyon pose is okay and so is tile. And because this is a beginner series, I don't want to overwhelm you with too much things. Yes, we can stack control nets and use two or three at the same time, but I want to do a dedicated video just for control net. Otherwise, this video would be super, super long. Lastly, I wanted to congratulate you all that have been following from part one way up to what's this part nine. The next video will be our so-called graduation from the beginner series. And I'm going to show you a few tricks that I apply to my workflows. That's going to lead us into the next series. That's a bit more intermediate. But for now, pat yourself on the back because you have the very basics of Comfy UI down pat. And I'm going to do a whole bunch of follow-up videos on how we can actually apply all these workflows into real use cases. Now, in case you're new here and you want to check out the whole series, make sure to check out these videos. Until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.